Mind Canyon is an entirely improvised podcast. Music and sound effects are added afterwards. Topics are devised by Charlie Kemp and Steve Dawson. This week's cast are... Richard Soames. Seamus Maxwell. Claire Plested. Jonathan Brooke. Mind Gap. Mind Gap. Welcome to Mind Canyon. I'm Steve Dawson. I'm Charlie Kemp. Now, as we grew up, we all played fun games with friends, but we also played with imaginary friends. I used to have Dr. Funktown. He, he loved to dance. <laughs> I had General Bojangles. He was a, a military man, quite strict, and we'd go on manoeuvres together. Uh, it's silly now to think about it, but yeah, I had magnet hands, the human clown. He wiped a lot of my data, but yeah, he was great, great. Mine was called uh, Grubap, and um, he was rather an unpleasant fellow, actually. He would insist on playing checkers, but I'd only be allowed to have half the number of pieces at the beginning of the game as him, so he'd always win, and then he'd sort of do a victory dance around the room. It was really quite an unpleasant experience, but still very formative for my childhood. I've still got my imaginary friend. His name is Jeff Pickles, and he's actually a cowboy, <laughs> and he wears a really big hat, and sometimes he doesn't let me come down the stairs. My imaginary friend was called Philippa Joyce Edwards. She was a librarian. Uh, she would suggest books for me to read and periodicals to peruse. And our friendship was a long and flourishing one. My imaginary friend was called Goblet. And I think it was probably about the, the sort of ninth or tenth birthday um, when he just vanished. Everyone had an imaginary friend, but on the 3rd of August, 1999... Height of um, girl power. Many people wonder whether it's linked. But at about 6pm... Everyone's imaginary friend... Disappeared. I was playing with Mr Zippo and he was like prodding me sometimes he does that you know <laughs> and uh, I was listening to If You Want to Be My Lover you know Zig Zig Out yeah good song and uh, it was on the radio and then turned six o'clock he left he just Wait, he, he walked out he walked out Did he? like he never walks away from me no no he, if anything he'd back away right but he didn't he turned around right and he went out through the crack in my door right just slid through the crack slid in your door. Slid through the crack of my yeah. door. I mean, he's a really fat guy. Wow. And he just slid, right? Yeah. And that's the last I ever saw him. Did you, did you try and contact him? Oh, yeah, many times. Yeah. yeah. Went, went out into the landing. Yeah. Because I've got a landing at home. Yeah. Um, went downstairs, went into the kitchen. Because you had, you had a bit of a method for calling him, didn't you? you, you... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was like this... Um, Now, I know that sounds peculiar to you. It does. It does yeah. sound really peculiar. I can see because you yeah. just sort of flinched, yeah. right? But well, I actually, you were hit me because no, you had some really big movements. Because Mr. With it. Zippo was in the circus, right? right so okay, yeah. he knew how to be called and stuff in the animals. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so he sort of he was drawn by animals, and that's it. You've heard nothing since. Nothing, and I, and I call for him every night. Now, in isolation, it seems like that would maybe be a story where. A young woman has grown up, but it wasn't the only incident. I spoke to a couple of brothers who shared an imaginary friend. It was a very strange moment, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Looking back. It was disturbing. Mm. What, what was the name of your imaginary friend? Scrimble. 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 And what kind of a, 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 a being was he? Was he a human? Was Scrimble a human? I mean, he was humanoid. I right. didn't think he identified as human. Right. But it wasn't an alien. Okay, so he was sort of species fluid then at yeah, that so sort of... Yeah, just some... Yes. It was uh, very nice. He didn't like to put a label on things. Yeah, okay. And do you remember the moment that you noticed he was missing? Well, it was very easy to notice because, you know, it was, a, it, it was as if there had been some sort of clarion call from outside and he just stood up and turned around and walked out, out of the room. Wow, so he physically walked out of the room as, yes. as well? Yes, as if something were calling him. It was uh, yes. a bit like a sleeper agent, I suppose. 
because it was as if something triggered in his mind and he just turned up and left. As if someone had played a sound over the radio to activate him. Oh, really? Like the Manchurian candidates? Yes, yeah, so we did him. wonder, you know, will yeah. there be an assassination in the next couple of days? But uh, there wasn't. There wasn't, yeah. no. Did you have a call that you used to... Did you try and get him back? Do you have a specific way to, that you've of called course. him? It was um, a sort of call and response, because there were two okay. of us. Yeah, yeah, OK. We'd love to hear Jeffrey him. would begin in the following manner. A scramble! Scramble, come now. Well, you just do that one more time. Uh, a scramble! Scramble, come now. It was widespread. Uh, as he said, there was a sort of the sense that there was some sense that something was calling them. Yeah. And we managed to find some footage. Um, we've got this audio recording. There was, there was a band recording in a, a, a studio. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was uh, um, Bewitched, wasn't it? Bewitched, yeah. Bewitched, yeah. yeah. Uh, they were recording in a studio, and, yeah. and the sound engineer had left the, the tape running. Yeah. And a couple of the people in the studio were, were with their imaginary, imaginary friends, friends at the time. But two of the um, members of Bewitched, the yes, sisters. Yes, two of the members of the yeah, sisters, yeah, 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 yeah. Were, were there. And it was at that, that point they actually managed to record the imaginary friend going. Now, if you listen to it first without any yeah. filters, yeah. it sounds like a normal conversation. Right, everybody, follow my moves. Josh, you're always doing the same old moves again. I don't, I want, don't want to do that arm one. Oh, gosh, you're sure you've got to be doing the arm one. It's the best one. I tell you what, let's ask our imaginary friends. Yes! Tweedledum! Will you come in here, please? Yes. What, now, what do you think of our um, of our moves? Okay. What you really like this one with the arm? No, he hates it. He absolutely hates. Now, if we pause it there, yeah. Now I'm going to go back. I'm just going to put a specular filter over it. That's okay. a technical thing. Don't worry yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And if if we just listen, because you can't hear the voices, but you can hear a a sort of eerie noise in the background. Okay. Off at 6 p.m. It's my shift. Yeah, I'm clocking off forever. If you good, we'll go to the big golden door. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I did. It was not just me. No, no, no. There was clearly two people talking, and they talked about a golden door. Is that the first recording of a? Have we spoken to anyone who knows whether? An imaginary friend can be captured like this? Do they know about these specular filters? There's so many yeah. reports of this. This is basically a historical thing. We need to understand what that big golden door, door. is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it comes down to sort of myth and legend. So I chatted with an archaeologist who had been working very much in sort of the mythical worlds of imaginary, imaginary friends. Imaginary friends, yeah. yeah. Or as it's known, um, Dietaticus, um, which is the Latin. La- Latin die from brother and Tadicus from imaginary, imaginary brother. Well, it's a very complex issue, obviously, because we are dealing with an ethereal plane here. So, I would say, for me, the Golden Door is symbolic. It's symbolic of that place which is out of reach, which we must, as humans, aspire to. Now, obviously, it became a little more literal with the accounts of of the imaginary friends, and that is something which we might think is the origin of what this myth is for all humans. Just to describe to the listener, we're, we're in a room, it's surrounded by various different sort of uh, artefacts and pots that you've, you've collected o- uh, over the time. There's some, there's some sort of scribings in this one over here. Yes. There's a, there's a small man, and then the big man, then an eagle, then another eagle, then a pot plant. Yes, that's the plot of Where Eagles Dare. Did you do that? Uh, yes, I did that recently, Very which good. I shouldn't have. No, uh, but at, at the same time, that looks like a really old pot. Yes. Oh, yes. It's it, it's thousands of years old, but you need to blow off steam down here. Looking at this one over here, this one's really uh, really beautiful. Where's that from? That's... Th- this one. Uh, this was uh, sort of BC, uh, thousand BC. We're thousand, talking. Wow, yeah, thousand, thousand sort of, BC. Yes, yeah, yeah, unbelievable sort of Egyptian era. And on that one, it's got it's got bewitched written across it. Yes. Yes. Big fan. Right, do you yeah. do that as well? Again, yeah. yeah. Well, yes. Right. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. I mean, we're in uh, my lair, and yes. I'll be honest. Um, Sorry, it, did you call it? We are in your lair. Yes. Um, yeah. It was a bit difficult to get in. 
because you've got the big rock at the front, which to get in, I just had to stand outside and call you, and then you press the button, the big rock opened up, and then I entered your lair. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Is there a reason? You think she's Batman? Ignore the hostages. They, I say hostages. Would you mind just keeping quiet? I have an interview. Threats of violence. That's how he keeps us in control. Excuse me. Could you help me, me please, Mary or she from, from Bewitched? Could you please help me? So he did tell me to ignore the hostages, and I, d- I don't want to be rude. We're doing an interview here, so... Please. It's not the first time. You're not the first one to come down here and do an interview, you know. Oh, shit, are we not? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm late, Steve. I was just a nightmare trying to get over the, um... There's a river of lava. Yes. Yeah, good luck leaving, you yeah. two. Could you just take us with us, please? Oh, my God, it's Mary O'Shea from yeah, uh, yeah, Bewitched. Yeah. Hi, big uh, we're fan. We're supposed to ignore these guys, oh, though. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just, yeah, 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 absolutely. So this golden door that yes. you're talking of, does it, is it res- resonate in any myths? Does it does it come from? Because I've I've heard I've heard talk about sort of the, the Greeks talked about the golden door in terms of it's a way you go when you when you want to be at rest. Absolutely. Well, um, Jason is of course famous for having a golden fleece. Oh yes, yes. And uh, in other myths, there are doors. So we can certainly find this Mary. Thematic, Mary. Uh, yes. Hello. Do you still see the other girls from Bewitched? Well, I've got my sister here. She's unconscious. Of I'm sorry, Char- Charlie. Is it Charlie? I did ask you very clearly not to talk. I'm just so much. Not often awesome. in the same room as a member of Bewitched. I'm so sorry. It's just really. Do you remember uh, this one? C'est la vie. Of course, I remember it. Yeah, so I remember you don't, it. Do what you don't? Oh, don't start singing your songs again. Come on, oh, come we on. talked about this. We're stuck down here. I will. Charlie, I will Charlie, no, no, no. Look, I'll leave you to it, and I will head back out. To you the got any food? Yeah, we've got some crisps in the van, but we've got to... Have you got um, any denim? I've run out of denim. Like, you can take my jeans if you want. I, I'm going to don't, leave you to don't the interview. Give them your um, own jeans. Could I have the uh, car keys so I can listen to the stereo? Uh, yeah, sure. Cheers. Thank you. Go. Thanks. Thanks. Lovely, me- lovely meeting Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Please take me. Just go. What we're wondering is if there's any link. Basically, there's this suggestion that all the imaginary friends have have heard this calling to go to the the golden door. Yes. So, in myth, what is the one when anyone was called to the golden door? What did it What did it imply? I think it really implied just needing uh, the toilet. Right. That was an interesting interview. Yeah, it was really annoying at the end because. You had the stereo really loud in the car. and Yeah, I know. Normally what you'd say is, so what? People's imaginary friends went. Who cares? What does it matter to the world? And, and also, has this golden door been mentioned before? We spoke to a very well-known author. All of their inspiration actually came from their imaginary friend. And many, many times they feel like they channeled their imaginary friend's voice into their their writing, but then the golden door comes up quite a, a lot in his books. Yes, it's Robert. 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 Robert Allman. Allman. Now you're one of the best-selling authors. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah, I've yeah. had a lucky streak. You really have, haven't you? Yes. Um, but but you stopped writing. I did because your imaginary friend went. We were just upped and walked out. Yeah. And we'd always been a partnership. I'd always bounced yeah. ideas off her. It was just such a good working relationship and it was a little bit like Brian Clough and Peter Taylor from the Leeds United days, you know, you just, after Clough went off on his own, deciding he could manage without Taylor, he came a cropper very quickly at Derby County and was incredibly embarrassed and had to get Taylor back and I think ever since I've felt the same. Do you cast yourself as the Peter Taylor? Or the or the Brian Clark. I mean, because I always feel Peter Taylor never really got the credit he deserved for, no, he for didn't. what he did. It. If you read my first so, book, yeah. The Golden Door, yes, yes, I do a very extensive s- section on Taylor. On Peter Taylor, I'm just yeah. talking about second in commands in general, yeah, and yeah. how how much they are a commander, yeah, in their own right. If you read my third book, yeah, The Door of Gold, yes, yeah, you will yeah. find there's a very a good section on how leaders yeah, are often yeah. just voices. Yeah, that's really interesting because also all of your books were. A, 
a mixture of fantasy fiction and uh, football, the and three football F's. Yes. documentary yes, biography absolutely. very much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you read my fifth book, uh, yes. the Champions League. Door of Door Gold, of gold yeah, um, yeah. you'll find that there's a wonderful section on how really football is an analogy for everything we do. Yeah, and you also discuss in that, I mean, not only is there a... Uh, I'm a writer. A, yeah, absolutely. My yeah. name's Robert Ullman. Yeah. And I, I just was never the same since... Petra got up and left. And was she focused on the fantasy side or the football side, or was it very oh, much... Petra. A, yeah. Just a sounding board. Right. True okay. second in command. Now, Robert used to record a lot on his dictaphone. That's right. Some of his yeah, sessions. Yeah, yeah. So what, yeah. I've, what I've managed to do is I've managed to... I've got the original sound of him talking, but did I've you, also put the spectral filter on. put the on spectral filter on? So that we should be able to hear the, the other side and hear Petra. I've got to say, the spectral filter is incredible. It's great. It's, great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's just on, um, on GarageBand. And so he walks out of the door and um, into the bedroom. And that, Petra, is where I'm stuck. I'm looking for a phrase that sort of sums up the feeling of seeing a room that really should have been left tidier. Right. You want me, me to come up with that word, right? Yes, I do. Right. Well, that you just told me I was just a sounding board, right? So That's it. it. Thanks, listen. Petra. He walked into the bedroom. Yeah. It was just a sounding board of the bedroom it should have been. Perfect. Petra, I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you very much, Mr. Altman. You appreciate it. Appreciated it. Brilliant. The bedroom was just a sounding board. He appreciated it. Gosh, you are good. We're trying to get our heads round why children construct these imaginary friends. By the way, there's a lot of ants in here. Just ignore them. They're part of an experiment that we're running to see whether ants can replicate human behaviour. It's been unsuccessful so far, but all data is good data in science. What sort of behaviours are you trying to get ants to well, Mostly replicate? friendship. That's what we work on. So can we make friends with ants? We've given them everything they want, but they don't reciprocate. I've tried to stroke them, they just run away. So you, you're trying to become friends with the ants? So this, like, how are you, are you communicating? You seem confused. Yeah, what, are you communicating with the ants? Are well, you... no, we're trying. Right. We're trying our best. Right. I mean, you know, I don't appreciate you coming in here and having a go at our experiment just because it's not working doesn't mean it would never work. No, you're right, that's people... science. I forget what science yeah. is. Sorry, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, but, but back to the imaginary friends. So it's, it's a construct that we create ourselves. So, I'm sorry, these ants are really annoying. Well, they're never going to be friends with you if you keep killing them. I do apologise. The, the construct of imaginary friends, why why do we need it? Well, it's really simple. If you don't have any friends, then you have to make them. That's something that everyone, absolutely everyone, has been through. Nobody has any real friends. I do. No, I've got... Um, well, you think you do. I've got Chris. Chris is... Um, he works in, a, as a, in accounts. Um, uh, um, accountant, is he? Yes, in accounts. Emotionless yeah. robot. Well, uh, he's actually quite fun at parties. He seems he's, fun. He, um, he came to party the other day with one of those hats that you can throw balls in. <laughs> Um, and then there's Cassandra. She's great. She just made your genetic material so she can replicate her own. So are you telling me Cassandra fancies me? Well, yes, if you want to label it like that, then you can. She's got a boyfriend, so I don't think it's, that's, that's well, happening. happening. Morris, Morris, look. When the man is talking, the ants are dancing. That's well. What the fuck? Incredible. Yeah, as fascinating as dancing ants are, I don't think that's the subject of this documentary we need to I, it really should be we do that on another week because we're talking about imaginary friends now we're not talking about dancing ants so yeah but i mean seriously if that was on planet earth it would it would blow minds you're right but we're not making planet earth we're making mind canyon i think we should have ambition yeah okay well we spoke about ambition didn't we we spoke about how ambition leads to disappointment they were doing tangos or maybe we should actually go back and speak about that because the tango is the dance of love they're partnering up. Well, this is a great leap forward in our experiment. You know, Franz and I are very grateful. And I didn't think that killing the ants would be the thing that would set them off, but apparently that's what's happened. Yeah, it was either you killing them or it was all the talk of romance. Again, I don't think Cassandra's that into me. I don't think it's just... Look what happens when he says Cassandra. Yeah. No, but... Cassandra. 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 Okay, I, see, I 
ask you to ask more questions about the ants, it seems you're more interested in Cassandra. I think she's just she's a friend. Nice. She's really nice. Yeah, but she's, she's a, a lovely eyes. If you've got feelings for her and she's got a boyfriend, you should probably distance yourself somewhat from it because it's not healthy. No, I know. I know. It's just, you know, it might not last. Although the imaginary friend situation was perhaps unique, um, the idea of a mass event like this was not a new phenomenon. And we, we went to a symposium in Los Angeles with four experts who, who specialise in this area of, of mass events. We only need to think about the time when everyone in the world got the Tetris theme stuck in their head. In and then there was the time, of course, when everyone in Stoke-on-Trent played Don't Look Back in Anger together at the same time. At, the same time. Exactly the same time. Um, at exactly the same time. So these, these events are really common, actually, where something syncs up, moments sort of come together, and everyone has the same moment. At the Tetris event, you know, sure. where everyone got their theme from Tetris in their head. Ding, da, da, ding, ding, ding. Oh, don't stop it, otherwise, you know, it's going to happen again, right? Ding, 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 do, Derek, do, 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 Derek, 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 okay. Derek you're still Derek. doing it. Derek, Derek, no. Derek, no. Derek, no. Derek, 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 I've gone again. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, uh, I'm fortunate and I never played Tetris, so I'm able to resist. That's really good. It's, it's my, kind of my job, because obviously yeah. this comes up from time to time in our work, and it's my job to make sure it stops. Yeah. Mass events are often termed zeitgeist. And zeitgeist is a, is a German term for time spirit. And of course, the spirit of the imaginary friend was controlled by time. It was 6 p.m. in 1999 on that day, <gasps> fateful six day. Six is the opposite of nine. If you turn a six upside, that's probably... Is that anything to do with No, it? we investigated oh, that. Okay. It's irrelevant. Yeah. Okay, I got excited about that. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can make numbers say anything. Yeah, yeah. It's not a numbers game kind of presumptuous that you would think you'd immediately have solved it. I'm quite, I did do a year and a half at Goldsmiths University. Yeah, well, we've University. done collectively over a hundred years of research on Yeah, this. I nearly You're qualified as a, as a journalist. I say you, nearly. But you are a journalist. Yeah, I, thought, exactly. I thought you were. No, I mean, I am. I just don't have the, you don't need to be qualified for a joke. Katie Hopkins is a journalist, isn't she? Who let him in here? Uh, you know, I, you well, I brought, him, I brought him with me. I'm, I'm, is he real? Is he an actual he, yeah, journalist? Yeah, no, he, he's, he's real. Look, if I just punch him in the arm. Ah! It's my BCG, for God's sake. Ah! But he's, okay. he's real, yeah. Okay, he's real. Proof. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. We don't tend to vaccinate um, imaginary friends. Well, is that, could that be a reason why we, we lost them? No, they went to the, towards the door. <gasps> oh, my God, maybe they were not vaccinated, and, and that was the reason. They all went off for a vaccine. Okay, could who that is this guy? Serious. Oh, my God, who let him He's not even a real journalist. OK, I've got grade three piano, so... So you're not even a pianist no, I mean, either. Not, That's no, What you're no. saying is, I'm not a journalist, I'm not a pianist. What are you, sir? Um, An idiot, that's what you are. Hey! I like to think of myself as a... As a uh, hey, we all like to think of ourselves. Right. We all like to think of ourselves. I think about myself a lot. It just... I think about you too. Thank you. I felt that they turned on me. Goldsmiths is tough to get through the full three years of a degree course in journalism. Yeah, I got through it. I mean, just stay there for another year. For a session with me, I'm just going to... Brilliant. I'm going to record it yeah. for your benefit, okay. obviously, and listen yeah. back to it. yeah. Just obviously Thanks. keep it, just so that you have it, it's just for you, it's okay. private, personal use, yeah, so just yeah. make sure that you don't leave it around. Yeah, know. I won't, I won't leave that around, yeah, yeah. okay, right. yeah. So, this all started, you were saying, when we were humiliated in Los Angeles. Yeah, I was at a symposium about people who deal with the phenomena. All I was doing was making suggestions, and they just mocked my lack of qualifications. I have a degree from... I don't have one, but I went to Goldsmiths for a while. Um, okay. I have great three You should say you don't have a degree, Goldsmiths. But, I mean, I might as well have had one. You might have to go back to your childhood. Right. Steve, OK, Hi. thanks for coming in. This is your first session with me. It is, um, yeah. Now, we're going to record this okay, today. Good. And um, just that's for your benefit only, so don't you. leave that lying around. Um, I'm sure I won't. For anyone else, obviously. Really embarrassing. 
Yeah. Cassandra doesn't exist, does she? she she's an imaginary friend. Um, uh, I mean, she's real to me. But she's, she left, didn't she, Steve, she did. in she 1999? Left, yeah. She left. I'm sorry, Th- my style she- as a therapist is to go in quite hard from the top. I thought she'd gone off with her boyfriend, Roger. That's why I thought she'd gone. I, I've but she wasn't real, was she, Steve? She, was, she wasn't. Cassandra's not She's a real, not real person. No. I, I wrote to her. You don't have a girlfriend, do you, Steve? I don't have a girlfriend. You should probably admit that. I don't have a girlfriend. Steve, Charlie, this is Benson, the man who was originally supposed to be doing this radio show with you. You'll be hearing this for the first time as the episode goes out. I broke into the studio, I found your tapes, I spliced them into the episode. Oh my god. Now everyone's going to know your problems. Why do you do that? Because, because, because I hate you, because I hate I both of you. I understand that. You know, the, it, we weren't vibing. Were you, you, you were there in that pilot, we weren't oh, vibing. Oh, I agree. It was the right thing to let me go. It yeah. doesn't mean that I can't resent it. Do you want to have a listen back to that? That episode? Yeah, and why, should we listen why we back to you? the episode yeah, when you... Fine. Yeah, okay, okay. great. Let's, Actually, let's... I think that it would be a good thing yeah, for, for the okay. public to know... Yeah, what happened. What no, like. at last, so finally yeah. we can get this... Um, no, okay. Like that. Yeah, well, well, okay. Let's uh, let's listen yeah. to the pilot episode of, of yeah, Mind Canyon. Yeah. Uh, it, it used to be called uh, Mind Gap oh. back then because we had no ambition. Charlie, Steve, Benson, uh, hey. we're ready to roll. Who are you? I'm your producer. Oh, no one told me that. It's Jackson here. I'm just Jackson, the producer. What's stupid name? Okay. Well, I'm going to press start now, and you guys just fire away. Good luck. Hello. This Welcome is my to gap. my show. No, this is Mind Gap. Let's go again um, from the top. Yeah. Go from the top. Sorry. Yeah, what Mind like, Gap? We we spoke. It sounds like Mind Camp. No, no, no. That does. <laughs> but it's Mind Gap. All right. Fine. Okay, guys. We're good for another take. I'll just okay, um, yeah. get this underway now. Maybe um, I'll start this. Starting one in three, three yeah, okay, one, two. Welcome to oh, Mind God. Camp. Are we... <laughs> It's not Mein Kampf, it's Mein Kampf. You said it was, you said to no, it's you not. You said I want to call it Mein Kampf because I admire Hitler. No, I didn't say that, I didn't. Benson, that's not... Who is this? Well, you had a meeting behind my back and you changed it to Mein Gap. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Because Mein Kampf wasn't even behind your back, we had the meeting in front of you. about it. Well, I don't remember that. Just Okay, guys, very funny. Uh, time is money, so we just got to yeah. get this thing rolling. So we'll we're get just on with it. Go yeah. through Why don't you start then, Benson? Yeah. Go on, you start. Oh, okay. Fine. Yeah. Oh, we're all friends here. Mm-hmm. Starting yeah. in three, two... Um, <laughs> that's I'll just start not, it. I'll start it. Yeah, let's just, okay, let's start, start it again. again. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. <clears throat> and did you go to Goldsmiths, by the way? Well, I tried. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. I it's mean, hard to get through a whole degree. No, it I managed really three is, days. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I managed a year and a half, but um, I didn't really well, show buddy up for much you. of it. Yeah, all right, Benson, don't... Can, can we stop talking about this? <sighs> I'm, right, I'm just going to forget that you said that and then later on remember it. Okay. In the future, okay, and yeah. realise that you didn't have Guys, a yeah, be professional. Yeah, yeah. Let's okay. do a radio yeah. show. Let's do a radio show. Yeah. Right. right. <clears throat> um, okay. One, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> One, two, three. Hello to Mein Kampf. My name is Benson. I am an admirer of Hitler. No, wait, that's not right. Wait, you made me say that, Charlie. It's your know, fault. No, I I don't, I've had enough. I've had enough. I quit. You can do it on your own. <laughs> You can do it on your own. Should be quite clear to you, Benson, why well, you we... You sound like I walked out. It... You did, you walk, did out. walk out. You did walk it's... out. That's not how I remember it. You walked out. It was 6pm. It was August. It was 1999. And you, you walked out of the podcast. Golden Door. He's just... He's left. He's left. Let's get back into it. Yeah. One, two, three... Now, earlier on to today, while you were um, counting dominoes... Got a lot of them. I actually did something really interesting. I took your... Specular filter. Specular filter. Mm-hmm. And I actually applied it to Google Maps. And I think I might have found the golden door. Oh, let's have a look at it on your... Yeah, if we look screen, here... Yeah. Right. It's there. It's been... It's oh, noted that's... there's a Starbucks there. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's And then great. just next to the Starbucks there's, on there's Haring... two Starbucks in that area. Two sto- the on the same road. The franchise, that's the way that these things... It's on the same road. Why would you need two? Let's really focus on the Golden Door right, yeah, yeah, rather cool, than right. Starbucks, okay? Oh, there's another one around the corner, actually. It seems really pointless. Why would you have the three when you've got... Because there's two Costas there yeah. as well and one... Just, they're getting um, everywhere. This. Anyway, right, yeah. the point is that I genuinely think we could go to the Golden Door and we, we may well be able to speak to some of these imaginary friends. 
We are now stood outside uh, number 53B Lampard Street. Yeah, uh, it's a Maplins. Yeah, it's mm. a Maplins. Uh, I'm trying to look for a door. I, I can't... Where it says it is on the map seems to be just bricks. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my God. Like, do you remember the Harry Potter films with the bricks and they ran through the... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. Go for it. Ah. Uh. So are you guys looking for the golden door? Yeah. Sorry, just one second. Could you try running harder at it? Because that, maybe that was the sure. problem. Wait one minute. We're just going well, to okay. run a little. Oh. Just because if you're looking for the golden door, it's actually inside the store. Just before we do that, I think you're just not really going. You've right. got to really okay. go for it. Okay. This is the back way through yeah, to the golden yeah. door. Try it. Okay, really I'll give it another it. go then. Inside the store, you say? Yeah, it's just in, you've just come through the front door. Oh, we'll it's in the back. We we'll use that. Hey guys, it's um, Marley here, the oh, producer. Hi, Marley. Hi. 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 I can't help but notice from my sofa over here with my clipboard that there's a link, isn't there, between the day when all the imaginary friends took off and disappeared and the rise of the chain Starbucks. It seemed to happen at exactly the same time. Are you right? No, I'm just going to check that on Google through the specular filter. It just seems, you know, too much of a coincidence. It's, yeah. So that when did that store open? What time? Uh, open at 6, 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. on the... Yeah, yeah. And, um, 1999 in August. Um, wow. Did you need... The, the specular filter's not really doing anything. That's just a Google search. Oh, OK. I'll give you the specular filter back. Then. Thanks. Cheers. Hi, I'm Bojangles, and I work in uh, Starbucks. Thanks for coming to see me. Hi, Bojangles. Thank you for talking to us. Do, do, you, do you remember me? Charlie! Oh, my God, General Bojangles. He's coming to see oh, me. Oh, my God. This is, this is General Bojangles. Oh, oh, you mentioned him? Yes. Yes, yes he was your... Uh, my imaginary my friend. friends. Hello. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, what are you doing? Good to see you again. Well, we all got tricked by a golden door. Right. Oh, wow. Uh, are all the staff here imaginary oh, friends? Yeah, uh, yes. Do you want to play th- checkers? Uh, oh my you God. can only have half the number of paces. You were mentioned, you mentioned in the opening. Uh, uh, what's his name? Groobop. 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 Yeah. Groobop. Groobop. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. What, he still remembers me, does he? Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. yeah. Hang on. Is that a latte? Uh, yeah, please. A seven please. pounds, please. Hi, Steve. Hi, Dr. Funk Time. Yeah. You can call me Cassandra Funk Time if you like. I, I didn't. I miss our dances. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, sexual harassment. Um, would you like a soya latte? Uh, I would. Sorry, this this is my. It's got a lot of milk in it, but it's not milk. It's soy milk. You're older than I remember you. Would you Would you like? Are you single? Yeah. Cassandra, you know Starbucks has a very strict procedure. It's just so like General Bojangles <laughs> to be really strict. General Bojangles, <laughs> this is Steve. Hey. Hello, Steve. Do you want a muffin? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. That'll be seven pounds, please. Oh my God, are you a, are you an imaginary friend or are you just a customer? Oh, howdy there. No, my name is Jeff Pickles. Oh my God, it's it's Jeff Pickles. Sure is. I'm afraid you can't go by those stairs. Oh God. Yeah, no, they're, they're, oh, they're classic, sealed off. You know? oh, yeah. Classic Pickles. <laughs> oh dear. We all get along mighty fine. Well, yeah. How did you all end up in the Starbucks? The Golden Door. Yeah, we all went through it. And then you got employed by Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure did. Do they pay you? What do you mean? Payment. It's a. Uh, it's something. No, that I know we... what payment is, but what do you mean when you say? What are you saying? That, what do you? What do you mean? What well, I mean? Are you being kept here against your will, or, or is this? Is this something you guys? Uh, and sorry, Cassandra. Of course, you. Um, it's really sexist of me, but I actually thought that Doctor Funk Time was a, a man. That's really um, yeah, shows that's a fair. bias in me that I need to address. Um, okay, I'm going to have to write up a report. Um, oh no, please, General Bojangles. I'm not. Charlie, I'm disappointed. Oh. In you. Cassandra, do you, do you want to go? Do you want to go on a date? You know I do, Steve. Uh. But you also know I can never leave Starbucks. What? what? Yeah, we can never leave. Once you pass through the golden door, you can never return. Oh. 
Do you want to go for a, a date in Starbucks? I miss you, Steve. Miss you too, Cassandra. Like, I'm doing a podcast with Steve and I don't yeah. know if, like, all he talks about is this woman Cassandra and it feels like I'm not even doing a show with him anymore. It's like, it's jealousy, Charlie, don't worry. So I think we've come to the end of the podcast, which um, I think, you know, Cassandra would be really pleased <laughs> that, you know, it's over so I can go and see her in Starbucks. Yeah, um, don't, just don't go through the golden door because sure. I just think that might be something doesn't feel right about this. It feels Cassandra, like she might be a siren of some sort. That, Cassandra that, loves me. Yeah, and I just think it's great you've both come to therapy together. To yeah. Yeah. yeah, Steve's session, Thanks. Thanks. and yeah. I'm going to prescribe you both a very strong antipsychotic medication. Yeah, great. thank great. you. Great. Um, but, we will continue to wrap up the podcast from within the session. Yeah, uh, go sorry, ahead. apologies about doing that. I know no, you're paying. And okay. thanks, to, thanks to both psychiatrists. It's nice to be here. Yeah, I really yeah. admire uh, my uh, colleague's style here. Cuts right yeah. to the chase. Really yeah. impressive. You too. It's good to have someone who really gets under their skin. Cassandra would have loved. Would, would love you. Yeah. I'm just here to clean. So great. Okay. Okay. You're wondering. Okay. I just wonder yeah. if anybody could. T- just help me out a little bit and take me home. Oh my um, God! It's, just, it's Mary told O'Shea. to ignore the the, um, yeah. the hostages. Yeah, yeah, oh, but it's just it's Mary O'Shea and the and the cleaning man. I mean, oh, I'm not a hostage. I'm just here to clean. Yeah, he's just the cleaning man. He's I always ask actually, am I supposed to clean the hostages? I wasn't. Could you tell um, me to ignore them? Oh please, I need a wash. <laughs> yes, um, humans have needs. Okay. So I guess what we can take away from this is that humans have needs. Yeah, that feels like the that's the theme. Like the, takeaway point from the whole main sort of point is, of the, um, the whole idea of what we've been talking about I guess yeah absolutely Great. good um, that feels like it ties it up I always feel like uh, calling my old lecturer at Goldsmith and saying you know up yours hello hi is that uh, is that Professor Tompkins yes yeah, speaking who's this hi hi you might uh, might remember me I'm Charlie Kemp was it, was it your course in Goldsmiths? Yeah, I, mean, I had a lot of students. Yeah. Was that something you wanted? Yeah, and I did a, I did a year and a half. Oh, so you didn't finish? Okay. No, I mean, I could, I would have done, but it wasn't the sort of, but yeah, anyway. You, so was there something you wanted? Yes, I, I mean, yes, I, I wanted to say in your face. Okay, I don't know what that means. Well, okay, well, I've just done a podcast and we got to the bottom You're of... You're doing a podcast? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This Great. It sounds well like you kind of, well, thanks. That's, just thought you might be... Just better. being polite, I don't care. Right. Okay. Is that it? Um, uh... Okay, bye. It's Steve and Charlie, and we just wanted to just thank you for getting to the end of this podcast. You've done really well. Yeah, your prize is in the post. Yes, uh, and if you also want to give us a prize, then you should uh, subscribe and, um, and review us. Review us on uh, on iTunes or Stitcher or I don't know, like whatever platform you're yeah. using. Yeah, absolutely. And and also, if you did like it, just just tell your friends, tell everyone about it, and uh, and and if you didn't, you know, just just you know, just. Keep it to yourself. Yeah, keep it to yourself. Or recommend something else. Stop blabbing your mouth off about how bad podcasts are. Exactly. We give free content. What do you want? Unbelievable. Oh, and uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. 